Hey guys, welcome to the advanced user guide. We're going to be moving pretty quick, so make sure you use the pause and rewind to keep up. Going straight into it, we're going to be mapping N64 controllers. They are pretty difficult to map, so you're going to want to watch the picture on the bottom right and follow along by pressing the buttons as you see them on the screen. Again, not going to hold up here, just going to keep on moving, so make sure you pause and rewind so we can keep this video quick. A couple things to note, uh, the left trigger and right trigger could both be your Z buttons. Uh, the way you're mapping it is a little bit weird, but it looks like a Super Nintendo controller. Uh, we're making the select button left button because it's not used that often, and if you don't have a select button, you're not going to be able to set a hotkey, and then you're not going to be able to back out of games. So if you do want your left button for a specific game, you can map it, but you won't be able to back out without turning the console off. Now that your N64 controller is mapped, we're going to look at how to change emulators for the Nintendo 64. Sometimes some of the games don't run perfectly, so there's a few different ways to troubleshoot this. Changing the resolution and changing the emulator, which are both uh, opens by starting a Nintendo 64 game. And then pressing A on your controller to open the configuration menu. From here you can change the emulator and the resolution for a specific game, or you can change it for all games. I would suggest just working on specific games. This can easily fix small issues that you have, but changing all of them will create other issues for different games. Alright, we're going to go back in now, and we're going to look at how to change the resolution. This one's a bit more tricky, it doesn't necessarily fix a problem so much as create one, but it's a good way if you have a game with lots of graphical issues that you want to try something different on. Most of them shouldn't have that, so you're probably not going to be messing with this, but advanced user guide, advanced stuff, right? Alright, next we're going to be looking at mapping the controllers to work for the Dreamcast. They will come pre-mapped, but sometimes some new controllers or different controllers can have issues with the regular mapping, so this way you can go through the Dreamcast menu, open up Rycast, go into settings, and you make sure to check the correct controller and hit map for it. You can change the port. Again, you're going to want to follow along by rewinding and pausing in the video, not following my voice. Map the corresponding controls with the right buttons, and they should work in game no problem. Uh, also, should note that you're going to want to shut down the system the proper way once to save this, or if you just pull the plug out of the wall, you're going to have to do it again. Alright, we're going to do the same thing with the DS here. Sometimes controllers can be a little weird with the DS and you do have to map them yourself. Uh, you're going to press the left button, I think it is, on the D-pad to open up this drastic menu. And from there, you're going to go into the controls and just press the book, press A to map the button and then the next button you press will be that button. Uh, you're going to want to map them all for your controller. I already have them mapped here, so we're good to go. Next we're going to look at how to fast forward games. Some of these older games have cutscenes and dialogues that are way too slow. So you can set two button combo to speed it up. So when you open up a Super Nintendo game or any game with the RetroArch overlay here, you can press select and X and it'll open up this menu you're seeing. Make sure you go back, rewind, pause, do what you got to do to follow along. But I'm just setting a hotkey. By setting that hotkey, you can press select, and whatever key that you select is the hotkey, and now those two buttons will be your fast forward button, which you can see at the top right. 
and utilizing in game there. So super easy to do. Come back right out and move on. Shaders are going to be the next thing we're looking at, which uh, for Super Nintendo specifically or for other games can change the way it looks a little bit. Some of these older games, uh, when they're made new with higher resolution, look uh, actually more jagged to some people's eyes or less nostalgic. So some for the shaders that they have here. These are just going to change how the game looks a little bit. This is how you're looking right now, is how you change a shader for one specific game. This will be a nice way to pick out the shader that you want. I'm choosing one that's pretty common here. Uh, let's say that I liked it based on how it looked before to how it looks now. Uh, when I turn it on and off, um, then I would go into the follow-up, which will be how to change the shader for the entire Super Nintendo system. Uh, a lot of people just pick one that is popular, change it for all the games in the system. So the next part will show you how to do that. You're going to want to pause and rewind uh, to follow along, but I'm not going to, you know, voice over it. So some of you guys are going to want to play games that are not included. There are many retro systems out there, more than even that we have, so this will be a nice way to follow along how to install new emulators onto the system that aren't already there. And then using our first new user guide, you can follow along on how to add games if you already have ROMs. If you're not sure how to get ROMs, I would say message us that but yeah installing from binary or source source if you have an internet connection binary if you do not the raspberry pi can install some of those systems from binary without the internet but most times you're going to need internet to uh, install these new emulators so just going to speed through this real quick Finally, we're going to look at using Kodi. Kodi is a bit more difficult than this will show, but this is just going to be how to set up controllers on it initially. Um, you will need to plug a keyboard in to make this happen because the controllers do not come automatically configured to Kodi each time. Pretty simple to use. Just set up the controller. Once it boots up, you're going to scroll up to the little gear. Go to input and input the controls of your controller just like you would map for any other system. Uh, beyond that, using Kodi is a bit more difficult. You have to tell the system where the shows and movies are, but they move from time to time, which is what allows it to stay free. But you need to know how to tell your system where to look at those and then how to change that when it moves. So um, if you are interested in that, uh, we do have another guide that's specifically geared towards getting your Kodi moving set up. And uh, definitely need to watch that because it's more than just a 30 second thing. That 
is the advanced user guide, so uh, watch slowly, uh, rewind, track the stuff you need, send any questions that you might have, uh, more videos to come, help make this a little easier to do.